You may already have heard of git rebase, which allows you to change the base commit of a branch. This keeps the commit history more linear because it avoids creating extra merge commits. I already made a full video on rebasing, link in the description. But there's also a more powerful version, the interactive rebase. With this command, you can edit previous commits, including the commit message. You can split one commit into multiple commits, you can squash multiple commits into one, and you can even delete and reorder commits. Let's go through a quick real life example for each of these. Let's start with editing a previous commit. Here, I'm on the feature slash login branch, which was split off from the main branch here. The main branch has already been pushed which I can see because it says origin here. The feature branch has not yet been pushed, and that's super important since you should never rebase pushed commits. If you're not quite sure if you've already pushed your feature branch, just run git branch a to see all your remote branches. And if the feature branch is listed there, you really shouldn't be rebasing it. If it's not listed there, you can safely rebase. Okay, so let's take a look at this commit and we can see here that these two files were changed. If we look inside the changes to the index.js file, we can see here that I accidentally left some debug print statements in there and some commented out code. With interactive rebase, I can edit the commit to get rid of this without creating a new commit. Now to actually do the rebase, I'll check out my feature branch and then run this magic incantation. It's git rebase, not git rebase. This command will take the last four commits, temporarily put them to the side, and then reapply them one by one, stopping at each commit and allowing me to edit them. If you don't want to count out the commits while you're typing the command, you can also just use the commit hash of the ancestor of your feature branch. So in our case, this commit here. When I run that command, Git will open a file in a text editor. And by default, that text editor is Vim, which runs in a terminal. If you're a bad programmer like me who doesn't know how to use Vim, I highly recommend that before you attempt a rebase, you reconfigure Git to use a text editor that you're more comfortable with. So let's quit out of Vim by hitting the escape key and typing colon Q exclamation mark, and then I run this command to set my editor to VS code. When I run the interactive rebase again, Git will open the file here. Okay, let's actually take a look at this file that Git opens for us. Git has not actually started the rebase yet. It's showing us a list of all the commits involved in the rebase. Unfortunately, as always, Git is trying to be as confusing as possible and showing the list of the commits here in reverse order from our Git log or our graph. So just be aware of that and don't let it confuse you. Git is asking us what we want to do with each commit. As you can see, the default option for each commit is pick, which just means that Git will leave the commit as it is during the rebase and will not change anything. So if we close the file now, Git would do the rebase as we can see here. And if we run Git status again, we can see that we're no longer currently rebasing. Looking at the commit graph, we can also see that nothing has changed. And the resulting state of the repo is almost exactly the same as before the rebase. That's not really helpful, so let's try again, but this time we'll actually change this commit to edit. Now when we close the file, Git will start the rebase and pause right after applying that commit, giving us a chance to make edits. In our case, we told Git to stop at the first commit of the rebase, so basically here. Remember, we were trying to remove these extra debug print statements and comments, so let's open our index.js file and delete them. Once we're done, we can run git add for those changes and run git rebase continue. Git will let us change the commit message if we want, and once we close the file, it'll continue with the rebase. Since at the beginning of the rebase, we didn't specify that we want to edit any other commits and just left them all set to pick, Git will just reapply them again automatically and conclude the rebase. If we now take another look at the commit history, we can see that these lines that we removed are no longer there, as if we had never committed them in the first place. Just be aware that this alone won't delete those lines of code from your repo entirely. And even though it's difficult, there are still ways to extract them. So if you're trying to remove sensitive information like passwords or API keys that you accidentally committed to your repo, you'll need to use another tool. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in another video on that. Now let's see how we can split a previous commit into multiple commits. If we take another look at that same commit here, we can see that the readme file was added and also a new endpoint was added in the index.js file. Looking at the context contents of those files, the changes were kind of unrelated and arguably should have been in their own separate commits. It's generally a good idea not to put entirely unrelated changes into the same commit. This idea even has a name, atomic commits. Let me know below if you're interested in that topic. Okay, so let's do another interactive rebase to split these two changes into two separate commits. To do that, I'll set the commit to edit once more. Git will pause at that commit again, but this time I want to remove some changes from the commit. To do that, I'll use git reset. With this 
this command, I'm telling Git to remove the last commit from history, but leave the changes for it in the working copy. So if I run git status, you can see that the changes to the index.js file and the readme file are still there. They're just uncommitted. Now I can add and commit the readme file individually in a separate commit and also choose a more appropriate commit message for it. Git will insert this commit at the current point of history during the rebase. Then I can make an additional commit with the changes to the index.js file and Git will insert it on top of the previous commit. Once I'm done, I'll run git rebase continue again and let git reapply the remaining commits and conclude the rebase. Sometimes I want to do the opposite. I want to squash multiple commits into one single commit. Welcome to hydraulic press channel. Today we're squashing a git commit. For example, if we look at these two commits here and we look at the changes inside them, we can see that the only thing the second commit did was remove a single line of code. So we can squash it into the previous commit by doing another rebase and setting it to squash here. You can even do this with multiple commits at once. Once I close the file, Git will open yet another file, prompting me to edit the commit message of the newly squashed commit if I want. After I close that file, since there aren't any other commits to edit, Git will just conclude the rebase and I can see in the history that the commits have been squashed. Lastly, I can also delete commits by just removing them from the file and I can even reorder commits Although honestly, in my entire career as a developer, I've never actually had a reason to do that. Of course, you can combine all the operations from this video in a single interactive rebase if you want. One more important thing to be aware of is that rebasing is generally a destructive operation. So while it's technically possible to undo a rebase with git ref log, it can be really difficult. So sometimes before I start a complicated interactive rebase, I just make a local copy of my entire repo so that I can restore it in case something goes wrong. Also, while doing an interactive rebase, you can still run into conflicts. As each commit is applied, it can potentially cause new conflicts, resulting in multiple conflict stages. For each stage, you then fix the conflict as usual and then run git rebase continue. I've already explained in detail how to fix these conflicts in my previous video on rebasing, so please go watch that if you want to learn more. By the way, I'm currently working on a cheat sheet for git and I want it to be the mother of all git cheat sheets. It'll be available for free and it'll even have interactive animations like in this video. It's gonna still take me a while to put together, so if you want to get it as soon as it's released, go to my website philomatics.com and leave your email there. Later this year I'll also be offering workshops on Git, so if you like my style of teaching, feel free to check those out at philomatics.com slash git workshop. I'm curious, have you ever run into a situation where a coworker messes up something with Git and causes you or your team a big headache? What was that situation? Tell me about it in the comments. I really want to hear from you. Have a great day and thanks Thanks for watching Philomatics.